this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to look at Windows 8 Consumer Preview on the Samsung Series 7 Slate. This is Microsoft's new OS for desktops, tablets, laptops, you name it. We're going to take a look at it now. So here it is, Windows 8 Consumer Preview. This is one that you can actually download yourself from Microsoft's website. It's about a 3 gig or so download. It comes in 32-bit and 64-bit versions and the spec requirements are very forgiving for this because Microsoft's actually kind of downgrading the requirements for Windows 8 so it can run on ARM tablets which means basically your Android kind of tablet architecture and not just your latest greatest fancy multi-core Intel. However this is the Samsung series slate and this has a dual core Core i5 CPU in it, 4 gigs of RAM and uh, an SSD drive so it's pretty much the reference design right now for Windows 8 on a tablet is reasonably powerful. It's no Alienware or anything like that, but it's a pretty good mid-range powerful machine. And you can see we have the Metro UI here, and that comes from the Windows Phone. Very similar, as you can see, the two user interfaces here. And Windows Phone has things like scrollable palette of your live tiles on the home screen, and then all applications have sideswipeable things, and we'll show you that the same thing works over here. So as we dive in here, again, you've got the tile interface, and this is pre-populated for the most part with a bunch of starter applications, and you can add more on. Now the big ones and the colorful ones here are the ones you probably use every day. You've got built-in calendar, email client, the Microsoft Store, we'll show you in a minute, Xbox Live integration, which is neat, the People application, weather, and so on, and access to SkyDrive, which is your cloud sharing that works between various platforms to share files, even Windows Phone, for example, Macs, PCs, you, you can get the SkyDrive and share all your files. Desktop takes you to the more traditional Windows looking desktop, looks sort of like Windows 7, or actually a lot like it, we'll show you that in a minute. And you've got other utilities, since this has a camera, we've got a camera application installed, there's remote desktop, they give you a stock application, messaging, Xbox companion on here, the regular Windows Explorer, and we've got a bunch of other things here because I've turned on administrative management tools to be shown here. So for those of you who like really getting geeky with all of your system settings, you've got all sorts of stuff, including defragmentation, Windows PowerShell, all sorts of stuff. And I've downloaded a few apps from the store. I've got News Republic, so I've got Evernote here. And also, if you set favorites in the web browser, they can show as pinned items on your start menu here. So how do you get back to that normal Windows desktop for those of you who are already a little bit terrified at looking at this? Well, you just do tap right there. And there it is. See, it looks just like the Windows desktop. Totally normal. You've got your taskbar down here. You've got all your little notifications for your charging, all that kind of stuff, quick settings things. And to bring up the keyboard, you do that. Now, of course, I can use a USB keyboard or Samsung's Bluetooth keyboard with this. And if you get a slate, you... you free to use whichever one you want, so it's a humongous keyboard, it's pretty hard to scrub with something like this. However, it's not quite as versatile as the one built into old Windows 7. Now you've got different input styles here, for example you've got a split keyboard, that's kind of neat. And you've got pen input for handwriting. And you can hide it away like so. And we'll put it back to normal keyboard, but it is not resizable, unlike the one in regular Windows 7. Will it be by the time this ships? Maybe so. One thing that's gone is the traditional start menu button, and that feels really weird. That was a pretty neat feature in Windows, actually. You could get all your applications there and then search for any application on the hard drive. Well, it's not that bad, really, because here we have the side swipe. This is what replaces the start menu essentially. And you've got quick access to some settings here, although when you're in regular Windows 7 desktop mode you've got access to quite a few settings. Devices is interesting, it's going to show you your monitors, keyboards, anything that's connected at the moment. And if you do search, ah, there's where all your apps are. So basically your start menu is still there, it's just under search. And just like you used to be able to do with Windows 7, anything you type in there to launch an application or some kind of command, you can still do it. So it's not as scary as it first looks. They're all still there. So there's all our applications. And if you want to get back quickly to the Metro UI, you can just tap this little bit Windows button here. That's a hardware requirement for Windows 8 tablets. But if you don't have one of these kind of tablets, also don't worry. You just hit the Windows key on your keyboard and you can keep switching back and forth madly as quickly as you like, just like that. See how fast that is? Very, very fast operating system. And, because it's a multitasking operating system, 
You can swipe through all of your recently launched apps. See, comes with Solitaire. Life is good. So you get the idea. So this is a new favorites or contacts application, for example, right here. So everything that we've got running, we can swipe through really quickly. It's really well done. Now, obviously, this is geared towards a laptop that has a touchpad, a slate that has a touch screen, or if you've got one of the touchable mouses, the ones with the touch top surfaces like Microsoft's touch mouse. It's going to be a little bit harder if you're using a traditional mouse, to say the least, to do things like swipe between screens, especially when you're here, because it's all about moving back and forth very fluidly. How Microsoft's going to make that easier for, uh, for us who just have normal mice connected to desktops, I can't tell you that right now. Let's explore some of the app applications that are pre-installed. First, look at the Microsoft Store. That's pretty neat. So we've got, again, Metro UI is everywhere, and we've got stuff that won their app contest, and we've got some featured things here, new releases, top free, top paid, the kind of thing that you would expect kind of from a mobile OS store. And then we can view things by genre, a little game-centric here at the moment, but we've got social stuff, we've got entertainment. And if you're interested in something, just tap on it. And we can get Sketchbook Express. And since this is a tablet with a pen, I think I'd like to have that, so I'm just going to say install it. And it goes ahead and installs it, and when it's done, you get a little notification that says, Woohoo! We're done, and it is installed. There you go. So it's, it's a pretty nice looking store. And the selection, of course, will grow. This just rolled out today. So if you want to see all entries in a category, just type the title up top. So now we have all news and weather. And again, right now, this store just opened up, so we'll see more. But for now, that's what you've got for news and weather. So clearly, Metro is about putting stuff at your fingertips literally very quickly and very easily. If I want to check out the weather, just tap on it. It's going to download the weather data over the internet. And this is Bing Weather, so very nice visual weather and side swipeable like Metro UI on the phone. So we've got our extended forecast, we've got radar, we've got maps, historical data, all the stuff that you need. And you can actually have some of these on your lock screen, so when the computer goes to sleep and you're waiting for it to wake up, you can have information about how many new mails are waiting for you, what the weather is, and your next calendar appointments. Speaking of calendar, this also comes with a calendar application, and I've actually synced this guy up with my Google Calendar account as well, so you can sync this to multiple sources. It's pretty handy and useful. Certainly more expedient than launching the calendar in Outlook, just like that. Here it is. And the nice thing is it's built in and it's a part of Windows 8, no paying extra for it. You already saw the People app. SkyDrive is for access, as you might guess, to your SkyDrive files. Works as expected. We've got a video player app here I'll show you in a minute. And a couple of games and stuff like that. Finance, our Xbox companion. Now let's take a look at the video player. Now you still have regular old Windows Media Player on this too, but you've also got this video player that's built into the Metro UI, and that's what we're going to use right now. Scrub ahead a bit. Nice, easy, straightforward. If we hit the back button, you can see this is the video application here, and it's got things like access to free trailers, the beginnings, first 10 minutes of Hugo, for example, the movie, and the marketplace if you want to pick up some TV shows and so on. All very quick, friendly, easy to use. We've also got a photo viewer on board. So here in the photo view, we've got local pictures, we've got my SkyDrive photos, access to Facebook photos, I haven't signed into Facebook yet though, and access to Flickr as well, so all pretty cool. And we're going to take a look at SkyDrive photos. And there's my roll of photos. Cute cat. Shiny car. Tap on a photo. All very quick. Pinch zooming. Yeah, all good. So again, sweet, and it, it's certainly marrying the experience of a mobile tablet as an Android or iPad with the power of Windows here. 
Now, if you want to do real work, you can, no problem. You can install Word on this, for example, the full Office Suite, Photoshop, all that kind of thing. And they'll appear as tiles here, and you can also switch over to the traditional desktop mode if you feel a little bit out of place still using this user interface, so no problem there. For our Xbox Live games, we have Xbox Live integration, and you can use this as a basic controller for your Xbox as well. Get your little avatar showing up there. It shows recently played games. And more that you can get. And we've got the Xbox 360 Marketplace here. So say we want to find out about Black Ops. You can buy the game, you can play it on your Xbox right from your computer here. Awesome way to get you to spend some more money, isn't it? And you can play the trailer, too. And now let's take a look at Internet Explorer. Now Internet Explorer has two different versions on the same machine. Now this is a little bit schizophrenic and uh, yeah, what else can I say? I'll just show you what I mean. The one that's in here with Metro is a lovely full screen experience and it's very touch sensitive. As you can see here, I can do all this kind of stuff. It's easy to control. There is absolutely no Chrome anywhere around here. So there's no itsy little scroll bars to have to worry about and non-finger friendly stuff. Just like your iPad or your Android tablet, if something's too small to tap on a link, just make it bigger first. Works very well. Supports HTML5 video, but Adobe Flash, right now there's no installer for Adobe Flash for the browser here. As you can see, there, there are no controls. What if you want to access the URL bar? Well, you just drag up from the bottom, and here it is. Again, it's looking a lot like Windows Phone's web browser. So here are my currently open tabs right here, and this is my URL bar, my refresh. I can pin this to the start menu or to my favorites, and I've got various tools over here. Find on page, view on desktop. It's not super there, fancy. And here, we hit the plus. You can see frequently visited web pages and things that I have pinned. So there's your quick way to that. Works just fine. Again, the only thing is right now, no Adobe Flash. So let's take a look at the more traditional desktop version. And here we've got IE right on our start bar. And this looks more like the experience you're used to. You can see the little home here, the little favorites button, the little settings. This is all the stuff they're used to, and we do have Adobe Flash in here. And again, just like in Windows 7, this is actually pretty touch friendly. Yeah, we do have scroll bars that have been enlarged here to make it more touch friendly. But you hardly ever need to use them because you can do all this kind of stuff too. So that's your dual web browsing experience in Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Even when you're in this desktop view, by the way, you can still get to these metro settings right here. And you can get your clock and your Wi-Fi and your power status quickly and easily. And if you want to get to even more settings, well, there's a bunch of different ways, but there's the old traditional tap and hold on your computer. And I could do that with my finger too, but it's a little bit more precise to do this right here. And here we've got all this stuff. I have access to my device manager, advanced system settings. All of this stuff is still here, Windows Update, all that kind of stuff. The Metro side handles Windows updating quite well. Now Microsoft's goal is to not have to restart every time you install Windows updates, but so far we have had to restart when we've installed updates, and we'll see where that ends up. Somehow they're, they're saying that that's a little bit on the manufacturer end, and I don't quite understand how that would work, being a manufacturer issue. Obviously the pen still works, you graphic artists got that down. And for those of you who want even greater control and more of your Windows 7 experience back, don't worry, it's here. We've got, now we've got a ribbon bar, basically. Just tap the little down thing here, and this, this is just like Office. You've got a whole lot of stuff you can do here. From the file menu, you can get properties, rename, so on, mapping network drives, adding network locations, and access to your old-fashioned control panels right there. So have no fear, all of your standard control panels are still available that way. We hit back, you can see you can switch to view controls here, all your icons, your layout, all that kind of stuff. 
file. Open a new window, you can open a command prompt, all sorts of stuff. So you're still good to go there. A nice elegant embedded solution taken basically from Office. Now for your art types, we're going to check out that free Autodesk Sketchbook Express. You can see I've already started a drawing, and notice what, we have pressure sensitivity right out of the box. I'm doing light press, now I'm going to do big old heavy press, I get a darker line. So I didn't have to futz with Wacom drivers or anything like that, just out of the box on the Samsung tablet, it's working. And Microsoft's been working hard at getting multi-touch to work nicely, and to get pen to work well without you having to worry about all those drivers that have been a headache previously to get things like touch sensitivity and pressure sensitivity on your tablet. So, pretty cool. And now for a little bit of productivity, we're going to check out Evernote that's available in the App Store. And you can see that it's also got a very nice kind of Metro presentation. Here is all my notes. All here. Nice visual one. Speed is very good. The first sync took us a little bit while, but hey, this is beta software. Definitely looking lovely. If you want to create a new note, just swipe up and you get the controls here. You can see there's new note, there's a sync option, and you can also just sign out. So in terms of games, there's a couple of games that come preloaded. I'm going to show you a pinball FX here, because this one's pretty neat. So, all touch friendly, and you don't have to be right on the flippers. Just anywhere on the sides will do. Might not have all the excitement of, say, Skyrim, but for casual gaming, obviously, fun. So soon. And how do you do simple yet important tasks like shutting down? Again, you swipe like so, and you can see you have settings over here, and you can hit power, and we have the option to sleep, shut down, or restart. You can also access your notifications, your wireless, your brightness, your keyboard settings, just like that. So that's Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Again, if you want to give it a try, you can download it. If you've got an available partition or external hard drive, you can load it on that. Uh, it, since it's not fully ready for prime time yet, you probably don't want to overwrite your Windows 7 installation with this. Oh, actually, it's been working pretty well for me, but the one thing is, just like with Windows 7 when that came out in preview, you won't be able to upgrade that to the full version. So that means if you're running Windows 8 Consumer Preview, you can't just turn that into Windows 8 full version. You have to wipe out anyway. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch our full review of the Samsung Series 7 slate as well. Visit our website and subscribe to our YouTube channel.